It is to make sure we put some. No, now it's make America exceptional again. Clinton and uh. make sure she never, ever gets in the White House again. I am the man who can bring us together to do that, and I ask for your vote. He's going to fight her. He's going to fight. He's going to fight her. He's going to fight. ISIS is going to fight everybody. <laughs> if you don't believe it, he'll fight He's you. He's going to fight the war on drugs himself. Yeah. <laughs> fight the war on obesity. And angry as they watch our freedom, our security, and the American dream slipping away under an unresponsive government that is populated by bureaucrats and special interest groups. We're not going to solve this problem with traditional politics. The only way we're going to solve this problem is with we, the people. And I ask you to join me in truth, in honesty, in integrity. BenCarson.com. We will heal, inspire, and revive America for our children. But only after your vaccination. Yes, that's right. And he needs your contributions because he had a guy in charge of his finances paying himself $20,000 a month. <laughs> BenCarson.com. That's why we embrace wow. the enterprise. And it made us the most prosperous people in the history of the world. That's why we embraced individual liberty. And we became the freest people ever. And the result was the American miracle. But and now all the young people think that's a really bad thing. Hashtag resist capitalism. Yeah, I mean, it's not so much the young people. Because I get, you know, young high school kids, college kids, they don't really know a whole lot. Just like we went out to uh, Planned Parenthood, saw those abortion kids. Ten years from now, they could have a whole different ideology. Right. Especially like when I see people that are 40 that are feeling the burn. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you, you understand what's happening here. <laughs> Just because he says it's free, it may be free for you to receive it. But somebody had to pay for it. Like, I can give a homeless man a dollar free. I worked for that dollar. But I'm choosing to give him that dollar. And I'm okay with that. I don't want somebody to take it away from me, give it to somebody else, say, oh, it's free. Right. right. <laughs> you know, Hillary is trying to criticize Bernie Sanders now. And one of the things she's pointing out is, like, he doesn't have any way to fund his socialist program. I mean, right. Even Hillary is saying that Bernie can't. Fund his socialism. Yeah, because who's going to pay? Socialism, you run out well, of That's the thing they don't fund. understand. We talk about these kids feeling the burn. It's free, free, free. Yeah, they're going to raise your taxes to pay for right. all this free stuff. It's like stuff. the people that are going to pay for your free school yeah. are the 75% of Americans out there with no college education. And again, one of the reasons that they can get away with that is because of the Federal Reserve. They don't see the, uh, the taxes immediately right those taxes get put into the rolled into the deficit and then we'll pay them we'll all pay them back eventually with interest to the federal reserve but they that's the way that they mask and hide this the smoke in the mirror that they 150 billion dollars to the ayatollah khamenei who's responsible for khamenei? hundreds of our servicemen and women khamenei he started and is ending the debate talking about this his advisor was like People. i've never heard ayatollah khamenei called khamenei, khamenei. <laughs> Will I'm <laughs> saying it phonetically. Land on January 2017. <laughs> and if I am elected president to every soldier and sailor and airman and marine and to every police officer. Oh, was that, that was like Ben Carson pronounced Thomas as hummus. Remember that? <laughs> I guess he didn't get what his advice was about. How to pronounce Tom and me. <laughs> He started out by praising the, the Navy, and now he finishes up with firefighters. And 75 construction workers. They're tough, they're strong, they're great people. Half of them had tears pouring down their face. They were watching the humiliation of our young 10 sailors sitting on the floor with their knees in a begging position, their hands up, and Iranian wise guys having guns to their heads. It was a terrible sight. Why were we there, though? And the only reason you don't want to ask that question is right? because well, we apparently there was an issue with a boat and it ran ashore, and then mm -hmm. I don't know why they were there, but stupid deals anymore. It isn't like these guys were driving around off the coast of Florida and got captured by Iranians. Okay, let's right. put some context. In it. <laughs> okay, yeah, I understand. You know, but but also understand that. Well, you know, Iran had a commercial airliner shot down, quote unquote, by accident by the United States, just as I believe they, they shot down uh, that, that flight, uh, was it eight? Uh, hey guys, we have a pretty interesting question I think is a good way to end this debate here. This is from Will Morgan. I'm going to put it up on screen. Uh, how within a controlled media complex can we make a significant alteration to current geopolitical religious narrative? So... 
Let's how, start there. How within the controlled uh, media complex? Well, I think uh, Rand Paul was a great example of how you, within the controlled media complex, you can counteract that. He said, screw you, I'm not going to your JV debate, and I'm going to use social media to my benefit, and I'm going to go on the new platform, Periscope, and I'm going to go live, answer your questions live, popping up. So he's using social media, and that's sort of the big thing is that they, they don't know how. They're still trying to figure out how to control the narrative with all of these new platforms popping up. So right there, and Alex Jones says this all the time, Make the YouTube channels, start your own broadcast. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can circumvent that narrative that they're putting out there, just That's, like Rand Paul And I think that worked tonight. because people could see that it was the media controlling it in the case of Rand Paul. It right. was clear what they were doing in terms of manipulating these polls uh, to their purpose and saying, well, we've got these, these magic numbers and we're not going to look at that data over here, even though it should have been mm -hmm. included. So I think that was key. Just like it was key for Donald Trump to be able to use social media and get outside of it because he broke the control grid of political correctness and right. this other stuff, okay? It was him fighting back against this control technique of political correctness, I think, made, made sense. Absolutely. That's right. The mainstream media might be controlled, but you are not. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, because when you think about it, that's why we call them the dinosaur media for a reason. They're experiencing a steep decline. Meanwhile, alter alternative media news outlets like yours truly, like InfoWars, we are absolutely skyrocketing. We are reaching millions and millions of people, and that scares the hell out of the establishment, but I don't think they could stop it. No, they well, can't. And, and you think about it, like Instagram, perfect example, um, there are so many accounts where the people are just making memes, and they've got hundreds of thousands of followers, and they're making political memes and talking about things that are going on in politics, and then people go and they share these pictures. And so even that is a brand new platform. It's reaching hundreds of thousands of people, probably more. Um, and, it, you know, it's Instagram. It's a meme. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. picture. There's still plenty of ways to circumvent uh, the establishment, and they know that, and that's why they're so afraid and really ramping up uh, their whole agenda to uh, to control, to try to get grasp. They're grasping now because they're losing that control. Yeah, so the, I guess the best answer to that question is um, just don't use the mainstream media. Like I said, you have all types of different other platforms, and if you don't want to use the uh, internet ghettos, as uh, Drudge calls them, just make your own website, make your own whatever. You know, you don't have to use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, just whatever works for you. And get your message out there the best way you can. Mm -hmm. Alex started on Access TV, you know, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Yeah. And now he's sitting in this studio. So it, it right. just starts with you being ambitious and taking that first step. And uh, Richard Reeves has a, a comment on that uh, Twitter question as well. And uh, Richard, we go to Richard in South Carolina. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Somebody had the Twitter question about uh, getting busy in the GOP and going to a committee meeting, et cetera. Well, one of the best things to do right now, depending on your state, first of all, you need to find out the schedule of your state for its primary or caucus, whichever it has first. You want to be darn sure and be registered to vote, first of all, because they're not going to let you even attend a precinct convention or a caucus unless you're registered. So make sure you're registered to vote. Go uh, vote. Go to your precinct convention and or caucus, whichever they have. You're going to find people that know the system that are friendly to uh, the Ron Paul Freedom Movement, the Info Warrior Movement. So you need to connect with those folks. You'll probably be able to identify them pretty quickly. Also, go to the uh, your county GOP or local GOP office, Republican Party, and uh, say, "Hey, I want to defeat. I want to make sure we defeat Hillary." You don't have to tell them your affiliations right off the bat, other than you're all about seeing Barack Obama go farewell and to make sure that we don't get Hillary come in in Barack Obama's place, and they'll be glad to get you working on the telephones, volunteering, uh, give you lists of primary voters in your precinct. I'm telling you, it wouldn't be that big a deal to go knock on a few doors right there in your own neighborhood. And like David says, politics start at the local level. Right. That's the most basic grassroots level is finding. I mean, think about it. You need to know your neighbors anyway. I mean, you never know when all this stuff's going to hit the fan, right? So if you at least found some fellow info warriors out there, some fellow patriots that actually live near you, it, I mean, the benefit there could be, you know, you couldn't, you almost can't put a price on the benefit that they may be for you if things really go road warrior or something like that. 
Uh, and, Richard, uh, we got people yes. leaving right now. Let's see what some of them okay. have to say about the debate. Let's get Let's some comments. You got somebody? people coming up I'll the stairs right see, behind you. Somebody? All right. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think what Richard was saying, you know, in terms of we've always heard the progressives say, think globally, act locally. In other words, uh, you've got a globalist outlook, a globalist agenda. Let's act locally to make that happen. We need to understand globally and act locally to stop that same agenda. And I think that that's really the only place that you can be effective is at the local level, do it at grassroots. Let's go back to uh, Richard Reeves. Got Randy. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Richard. Carolina. All right, uh, folks, we've got Randy here, a guest at the uh, debate right now. Randy, you're, where are you from, you said? I'm uh, far set in North Carolina. So tell us, what did you think about the debate, how to go, and who won? I thought it went fairly good. I still think it's probably Trump, uh, Cruz, Rubio probably come in third. So you're looking at uh, kind of going with the anti-establishment candidates, so what you're kind of favoring? Oh, yeah, yeah. So do you, how how past due is it that uh, we uh, get get these establishment guys out? How past due is that? It's long past due. <laughs> hey, can we get Anything Randy else? to say Infowars.com? There's a war sure. on for your mind. Okay, Randy, can you tell us Infowars.com? There's a war on for your mind. Infowars.com. There's a war on for your mind. <laughs> All right, thank you, Randy. All right, All right. appreciate good. it very much. That was right. awesome. Do you want to comment on the debate? Did you go to the debate? I didn't see it, but I wish oh. I had it song. Oh, okay. I was looking for Mr. Jeb Bush. Oh, you're looking for Jeb? He yeah. said he's looking for Jeb Bush. Uh -huh. if, uh, uh, if, uh, Give him the mic. If you found Jeb Bush, what would you tell him? I said, Jeb, you <laughs> promised that if you became governor of Florida, I would come and do all the shoe shine and shoe repair. Now, since you're going to become the president, I'll have to come to Washington. Oh, <laughs> so, you, so you're looking for some work as so far as shoe shining goes, you. huh? Absolutely. I'm a double soul man. Well, I tell you what, I bet you Donald Trump tips better. Don't you think Donald Trump might tip better, the shoe well, shine guy? He probably would. I'll accept that too. Better shoes too. All right. All right. Good deal. Thanks, Thank sir. You. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, folks, there's a. You want to, let's see if we can round up a couple. Anybody yeah, else that's want to the Jeb Bush the economy there for you. Shine my shoes. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'll let uh, you I'll shine you my shoes if you get me <laughs> well, elected. You know and uh, he didn't uphold that least, promise, I guess. Yeah. At yeah. least he's got more aspirations than somebody buying a doggone Powerball ticket. That's yeah. right. <laughs> That's right. He's got you the know, right idea. Get a job. Uh, That's right. I'll tell you what. Could, you know, one thing I couldn't believe is people showed up at that Chino 7-Eleven out in California as if they'd won something. What, yeah. What's up with that? What kind of loserville was that? <laughs> I, I don't understand the gambling mindset, We didn't win. We didn't win. We didn't win. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It's just being close to greatness, you know? <laughs> And maybe some of those uh, billion dollars will rub off on them somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Exactly. Some of that billion dollar Slurpee sauce and rub it on them. <laughs> yeah. I thought yeah. that was a crazy scene. Yeah. It you was. want to try to track down some more uh, attendees? Get, see if we can get some more comments. Yeah, I mean, if it's easy, but if not, I okay. mean, we could probably. I think. Uh, yeah. If we see, we're not right in the flow. Folks, y'all want to comment on the debate? <laughs> okay. Looks like. Yeah. Come on over. Tell us what you think about the debate. Okay. What's your name? Nathaniel White. Nathaniel? Yep. All right, we got Nathaniel White. And uh, tell us what you thought about the debate. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I was pretty disappointed that Rand Paul didn't participate in the debate. Um, outside of that, leaving no substance, I guess Cruz did pretty well for himself. I uh, want to say Donald Trump probably made an ass of himself like he always does. And uh, really, I think the, without Rand Paul on that stage, I think the American people is the one that lost on that debate. Mm -hmm. I can't quite say who's the winner. Well, you know, I like Rand Paul personally myself, and I was just wondering. I really wanted to, to be more hardcore in the earlier debates, and so I thought, you know, hey, at least come back and do the early debate and really come down and slam down harder on some issues. Would you have liked to have seen that? Absolutely. You know, uh, most people think, you know, that what's happening in the Middle East is the biggest problem that America has. Uh, many people uh, haven't discovered that the Federal Reserve and our monetary policy is the biggest threat that the American people have. So, with that said, I feel like we should be crunching down on some of these fiscal policy and tax issues to really give opportunity to the American people, not making the sand glow out in Iraq and Afghanistan. Hey, Richard. And now, I'll tell you, the secret that the viewers really want to know is how in the world is a Rand Paul supporter? Did you get an invite? Well, <laughs> Rand Paul works his magic. Hey, uh, Richard, Richard, ask, yes, sir, ask him if he knows that uh, Rand Paul was... 
uh, trending number one on Twitter, even ahead of Donald Trump during the debate because he was okay. live on Periscope. Nathaniel, did you know that during the debate,